Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back to Allotment of the Dead. So, um, early April, um, I don't know, 6th or 7th, something like that. So, um, I think what I'm going to do today is give you a quick tour around how everything's looking at the minute. I think uh, with the um, onset of the spring coming in, um, everything's just starting to grow. It's that time of year when everything with the potential starts fulfilling that potential absolutely fantastic time of year um, everything's growing everything is coming into fruition and so far we've not had any kind of later frost that has come in and killed everything so i've bought a hell of a lot of my chilies down now fingers are crossed legs are crossed everything is crossed everything i possibly could cross is crossed to make sure that hopefully i'm not going to get one of these horrible frosts that's going to come in and kill everything. Um, it is really early. Um, I think there's a few other YouTubers have, have took some of their stuff down to the plot. Again, with that whole idea that hopefully this year we're going to maybe avoid that frost. But uh, let's show you uh, how everything's looking at the moment. I've got a hell of a lot to do still. Um, but there's a lot of stuff growing now. There's a lot of greenery all starting to sprout up absolutely gorgeous have a look at this okay so the the greenery of these absolutely gorgeous budley is already starting to come in the hellebores still looking fantastic i've never seen as many flowers on a hellebore as there has been on this absolutely amazing right so we'll go into the couple of things i planted so beetroot i've got a couple of bits and pieces kicking along uh, I'll give them a water today um, not much in the way of beetroot coming up but uh, there is some um, might be a little dry um, but I've, I've put the perspex on the perspex has done um, made a bit of a difference I think what I am impressed with though is the parsnips I've never had germination like this before these are all seeds I think from premier seeds direct absolutely fantastic germination i've never had anything this quick again maybe it's the perspex that's made the dip that's made the difference uh, but i'll give these a, a water and then i'll stick them back under the perspex but yeah i'm well pleased with that um this one i'd left because it had a load of um oh it's still got a load of the uh aztec broccoli you see these little plants here so that's the aztec broccoli still growing i might transfer plant a few of these out into pots and then uh, they'll be the uh, plants I've got for this year. I don't want them all to grow, there's a lot there. A lot of weeds and there's a little parsnip self-seeded, bless it. Okay, right, so let's have a walk around here. So the ferns have all started to come up, so I, I really like these painted ferns which are these kind of ones with nice little purple and stuff like that on them um, again really really gorgeous plants but, uh, again I thought they were dead they've come back they've come back with a vengeance so we'll see how that goes I've got plenty of planting spaces still to put in uh, flowers and things uh, need to refill these and get things in them right into the aubergine house so this one here is the kiwi fruit so Again, the leaves are really coming back to fruition. Really, really liking this. Um, there's two plants here, so we've got a male and a female. I can't remember which way around they are. Um, but you need both to actually get any fruit on the kiwi, kiwi fruit. Um, just moving in, so this is where I put all of the uh, soil from the hotbed or the last hotbed. Um, so this is all set for next year. And you can already see I've got some nasturtiums growing, self-seeded. Um, so I had nasturtiums growing in these last year. Um, and I think I might do something similar this year, this year again. Um, been a bit neglectful of these sweet peas. Um, I'm still going to have some to plant, but um, yeah, I could have probably looked after these a bit better. And the um, onions, I need to get them in the ground as well. Um, the baths, I think, are clear. I've just got to basically re-put the holes back in, uh, and we'll see how that goes. 
So this is one of my pots of lilies that I uh, had last year. Growth again has been really, really good. Um, I need to um, get them outside at some point, but uh, we've got Storm Kathleen in at the moment. Uh, we're not affected with the massively high winds that um, other places are getting, but they are kind of building up. You can hear the, um, the plastics and things moving with the wind. It's been a bit uh, kind of crazy. So this was a bit of um, perspex I was going to put on the side of the, uh, the aubergine house here just to collect some of the water. So uh, that's um, one of my jobs for the week. So this one here, uh, so we've got the kiwi fruit that we showed you. So this is a kiwi berry, slightly different from the kiwi fruit. It's self-fertile and you end up with little things that taste like kiwis, but they're actually only the size of a grape. So quite small kind of um, fruit on them. Right, let's have a walk up. The um, brassica cage, I still have yet to do. I need to basically get in there. That's just weeds. Weeds, weeds, and weeds, and more weeds. But uh, again, there's potential. So we'll, we'll have a go in there. Right. Into the uh, poison gardens. So these aconitum plants are absolutely growing fantastic this year. And... Um, the acanthus as well is already grown back as well. Absolutely fantastic growth on them. I've cut the uh, the jasmine right back this year. It got a bit out of control. It was actually growing into the um, the shed. I had that actual fronds going in there. The shed's on its way out, really. I probably need to give it a good paint to actually give it any chance of surviving. But it's things like fleece and stuff I keep in there. Um, fleece and rats. So I think there were some rats in there before, but um, hopefully they're all out of there now. So the tea berries are growing back, so nice tea berries. So the growth is all coming. So we should get some tea berries before long. Um, the trail camel was set up to catch the foxes in the carrot bed here. So you can see the foxes have come back. They've been digging and I didn't catch anything. Reason being, is the trail camera because of the wind has actually set itself back so it's actually pointing at the top of the um, alley house there so it's actually missed out this completely so I'm going to reset that today and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll catch them in the act um, I've got a couple of posts kicking around so I'll, I'll stick a post in and attach it to the post so my dahlias still no sign of anything from my dahlias let me know guys out there if you've got dahlias already are they showing their heads uh, not the ones you planted this year that have already got growth but the the ones from last year anything there um, hotbed wise we're up to nearly 20 degrees there um, I've covered it with um, this black uh, plastic now reason being um when um i put the hay in and give it a good watering what happens is all the seeds that are in the hay started growing so i ended up with almost like grass growing in there so i've covered it um we'll hopefully get that temperature up and then we'll be able to um hopefully um start using it as that hotbed um both of these things that were um pak choy and things like that a uh, bit of a disaster so We'll, we'll start again on those. Um, it looks there as if the foxes have actually had a go in here as well. And we've got ants in there as well. See the ants are going. Um, and the euphorbia in flower. Absolutely gorgeous plants. Again, you get the sap on your skin on this and uh, you'll end up basically with... Um, irritation and burns potentially and again the euphorbia there is in flower as well right so my compost seep still needs a bit of work um, we'll get around to that at some point okay into the other poison garden so again the aconitum is growing fantastic and we've got these little mini varieties as well look already starting to put out 
these flower sp um, spikes and on the side here as I said before it's the only thing in the poison gardens that you can eat so this is wild garlic so you can eat pretty much the leaves the flowers really nice strong taste of that garlic and again the uh, hellebore's flowers still do it really well so these are the the bluebells coming out english bluebells and we've still got some more of the uh, foxgloves and things growing here as well really quite chuffed with it this year um, over to the garlic garlic is still growing well um, just that latrec still nothing from that i don't think i'm going to get anything from that now okay let's have a look over here so uh, we've got the hostas coming up so these are plantain lilies or hostas um, this is the jurassic park one that i got from farmer gracie already started to grow these absolutely gorgeous leaves on them um, the strouch that's on them is supposed to uh, protect from um, slugs and snails uh, so you see there's nothing on these and you can already see slug damage on that one so i'm going to put some strouch on these as well i think um, but they are whereby if they can get onto the um, onto the leaves without touching the strouch i think they'll still do that as well uh, over to here and we've got the garlic chives again nice garlic taste uh, not to be confused with the lily of the valley here which is toxic um, Nepetia is I think starting to come back um, hopefully and the uh, the cola plant is really doing quite well as well right again more lily of the valley here different kinds and the saka cocker doing really really well right we'll have a quick look inside the alley house um it's where i do a lot of the potting up and things just to show you the uh packy powder so this was the doll's eye plant just got one of them come up so far i'm hoping that's what it is um i think that's what it is and then in front here we've got the white henbane see these nice furry leaves to them actually supposed to smell of um, rotting fish this one when it goes to flower but we'll, only, we'll, be, we'll have a look at that really interesting if it will but um i know why am i growing it i don't know it's poisonous it's fun right we'll go around the side here so we've got the uh joster berries growing back put out a lot of leaves now this is like i said before the first berry that comes in in the new season it'll be the one that basically sets the fruit first um my strawberry bed still needs attention all right we'll have a look inside the new build need to get a better uh, name for this so these are the pelagoniums which i basically bought um some time back um the mustards that i had in here had gone to seed so uh, i've taken those out today uh, but that's fine and we've got this potato vine um, needed a bit of water today so uh, but again it's another solanum species and it's got these flowers on it that look like uh, potato flowers but again another potentially toxic plant so we'll grow that where the um the like the uh the jasmine is i think so i still need to pot on all my brassicas the kale we'll get around to that at some point right we have life in the laburnum absolutely fantastic so we've got these nice little shoots growing in the uh i don't know it's this chain of gold plant as well i think the name for this um again the oleanders doing okay still and the uh amaryllis belladonna doing really well there so the single seed potato challenge i now have two really really good plants so one and two have really come up number three has started to come up so that's three plants i've got so far and nothing i think from four yet 
but maybe maybe there'll be something in there as well um again we've got some more um cosmos here and i've planted some cabbage so the cabbage is coming up now um, hopefully that'll be good and over here i planted some um i don't know if you can see that what it says there hairy balls so the gonfopodia uh, which again is used a lot in um flower arrangements uh, so i've actually got myself uh, some seeds of that just to try and see if we can grow that need to get the herbs in the ground still and the kamasa that's actually starting to try and flower now so i've definitely got to try and get them out in the ground somewhere uh, i'm going to try and finish early a couple of days this week and see if i can come down and actually start getting these planted properly right we go over to the uh the flowers that we've put in so the marigolds doing really really well haven't got that characteristic smell yet, but I'm sure they will. There's a few different marigolds coming up and the cosmos as well. Cosmos always does really, really well down here. Um, and then we've got the uh, honeywort or serinth growing here. So again, still do really, really well. Not had any luck at all from growing this larkspur and delphiniums, but um, maybe I'll buy some when we go to the uh, Malvern show, which I think is uh, early May. So uh, that's what the, the first um, garden show on the agenda. Again, you can hear the uh, absolute sort of, um, where they say the wind actually blowing all of the structures that we've got here. Okay. This was actually a, a pot of uh, thing that I upturned. I actually hadn't actually broken it up. So I think the foxes have done that. Uh, broken it down probably jumping all over it and playing on it uh, that's fine they can come and dig it as well if they like um, needs a bit more humus in this ground it's looking a bit dry and uh, lifeless at the moment so where there's weeds though means that there is some nutrients in the ground so hopefully we can uh, sort that out and you can see there the foxes have had a good dig around in here as well so I need to put that right again bless their cotton socks right I still need to put the uh, the cage for the pumpkins back up, so the cage there is still on the ground, and uh, that wind I think has actually had a good go at these as well. So uh, I'm going to need to um, have a good look at uh, trying to uh, put that uh, cage back up. Should be fine there. Um, the, um, I can't remember what that is. What was it called? Oh, gee. I tell you what, I've been forgetting a lot of things of late in terms of simple chard. That's what it is. So that's the uh, the chard that I put in um, last season. Still doing really, really well. Still taking some, some leaves off that. And then you can see the spinach also growing really, really well there. Self-seeded spinach. I didn't plant that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll um, harvest some of that. Uh, that should be good. You can see the, uh, the striped one in there. I think that one's sorrel. Again, self-seeded sorrel. Nothing I've planted. Right. Yeah, you see where the wind's blowing the... Uh, so that was on the floor over by the uh, polytunnel. So that wind from this uh, Storm Kathleen is going to town a little bit. So uh, I'm going to have to probably tie in the, uh, the blackberries again. So it looks like they've been detached from uh, from the um, the cage here as well. Right, so the final thing will be to have a look in the polytunnels. So the mulberry really, really doing well. Lots of nice new growth. Let's see if it will focus. We'll see. There we go. Is it focusing? No, we'll all we'll, there. Uh, try and focus on somewhere else there we go so lots of nice new growth coming in lots of nice leaves greenage and where I did the uh, the last bit of uh, pruning they seem quite nicely sealed um, no issues on those right we'll have a look in the polytunnels so um, 
I had set up the heaters in here. I haven't used them for the last couple of days and they've been fine in here. Um, temperature wise, it's been pretty good. Um, I've potted on the tomatillos today. They got really, really leggy at home, so I've had to bring them down. I'm not sure how good they're going to go grow back. Hopefully, nature will find a way and they'll come. Uh, and the roselle as well. I've actually potted that back on into these big pots here as well. It could be that I really pot these back on again a bit further down the line. So the farmer greasy lilies. So the two smaller varieties have grown really, really well. Um, there's nothing in the middle yet. So that was where the gigantic Himalayan lily is supposed to be coming up. Not got anything yet. So uh, I'm hoping that that will come up as well. Right, so the uh, the flowers that I had from last year. So this is the um, oh, what was this called? Can't remember. A syringa. So syringa is a lilac. So this is supposed to be one of the most smelly um, perfumed lilacs you can buy, which is why I bought it. When I, when I saw it at the Malvern show, um, it was in flower and it was absolutely gorgeous in terms of the smell. So it's the reason why I bought it. Um, I think when the uh, the wind and things dies down a bit, I'm going to put these outside. So hopefully uh, they'll do really, really well. Right. Uh, for those people that uh, saw me planting the uh, potatoes around St. Patrick's Day, they've all started to come up now. That's a really awful accent. I really need to probably stop that. Right. So you can see the uh, the plants have done really, really well. They're starting to come up. So over this next week or so, I'm going to come down with another um, bag of compost, a uh, bit more blood fish and bone, a bit more of the potato fertilizer and cover them up. So uh, it, again, it's, it's to, to make sure that any emerging um, roots with potatoes on them uh, actually get um, kind of covered up by the soil because where a potato will break ground and is in contact with sunlight it will go green and green potatoes with the Solanum species as you'd expect are toxic so uh, nothing in this one yet so what was that I planted? Charlottes now Charlottes are the ones that usually do me best and I've got nothing in them yet. Though I'm sure they'll come up. Anyway, right, so um, I've got a, quite a bit of weeding to do here. So you can see the uh, mare's tail, which comes up all over this plot, and I've still not managed to eradicate it yet. These are the uh, really archaic weeds that potentially go down for six metres or so on really, really fine roots. And every time you break a stem or a root, it actually throws up three new plants. So uh, very difficult to get rid of. It's been around since the dinosaurs, and uh, even the dinosaurs eating them didn't get rid of this. But uh, they're amazing plants to look at. Early in the morning, they actually collect the water. I don't know whether you can see on there now. Let me see if I can focus. There's little droplets of water on the leaves there. And that's the actual water they've taken out of the uh, out of the air. And it's kind of formed on the actual plant. One of the other ways of it basically managing to survive. Right, so we've got loads and loads and loads of weeds in here. Um, I've not watered that particular ground at the moment, but um, it is so fertile because um, it's had a lot of kind of feed over the years. With where because it's where I've grown the tomatoes and the chilies and things like that. So. Had lots of feed. Right, we'll go into this final uh, polytunnel where it's looking a bit of a storage space, a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, when I get into the new season and things start growing in earnest, um, we'll start moving things out. We'll start potting up the uh, hanging baskets and things like that. And I've already bought down quite a few of my chilies. So I've Brought them down, watered them. Temperature wise, it's not been too bad in here. Um, I think we've got down as far as six degrees, which is not ideal for chilies, but they'll survive that, um, hopefully. Um, it's got up as far as 37. It's 18 degrees in here at the moment, so 
I'm not too concerned at the moment about these. Fingers crossed we don't get any any frosts. Um, because if we do, I think we've got potential to lose some, and I really don't want to do that. Um, I've still got a load of chilies at home that I probably need to bring down at some point. Um, but uh, and I've got a load more to pot on as well, so I'll do that over the coming days. And uh, you can see this the little roots, see where it's made these little air roots. So when the um, these actually finally get planted up outside, I'll actually bury them to here. Which is basically the, the the end of the where the where the roots are kind of trying to grow there. So uh, they'll always try and put out more roots and try and actually um, give themselves a better chance of um, survival and actually growing um, decent um, chilies. Um, the other thing we've got here is uh, I've got one plant in here that I've left with flowers on now. There is a kind of a couple of, of uh, things with these. This is really early in the season for flowers. Um, so most of the plants so far that have flowered, and they'll generally flower because they're a little bit stressed. They'll, whenever they get a little bit of uh, maybe a, a period where they haven't had as much water as they would normally, or where they've had um, periods of time where they've just had that little bit more stress. they end up um, trying just to, to actually make those fruit um, a little bit earlier. Um, that way they, uh, they'll they pass their genes on to the next generation. As, as I said before, that's what life, for most things, is all about. As, as a human species, we, we try and give ourselves a few more diversions and a few more things to do, like gardening just to keep ourselves busy and take our minds off the fact that maybe at that particular time we're not doing the whole procreation thing. But um, as I say, there, there is a lot to life now, um, but for most of these plants, it's all about making sure that the next generation is uh, taken care of. Okay. So, like I said, I'm risking things a little bit by bringing these uh, chilies down now. Um, I'm not a religious man by any means, but if it means praying to try and make sure that these uh, actually don't get hit by frost and things like that, then uh, I'm open to anything. Um, not sure which one to pray to, though, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, that was, a, a, as I say, a, a tour just in this early April just as things are starting to um, heat up a little bit. Um, we've had 37 degrees in here. It's been absolutely gorgeous in some respects. Um, just to try and uh, maybe start the season a little bit earlier with these polytunnels is, is you know, th that's why we have them, just to try and actually jump, make a, a jump start on the, on the new growing season and try and get some earlier produce and... Uh, earlier things in the ground so uh, that's all for today um, hopefully um, I can pot on another load of chilies at home now I've got a bit more space now I've brought these down um, to give myself a, a hell of a lot more uh, kind of options in terms of uh, space to grow things I've got all my tomatoes I've started uh, over the last couple of days um, so they're going to need potting on when they finally when they when they start emerging and growing um, so I'm glad I've got that space there as well and I've got to start my cucumbers and I think I'm on the cusp of starting my courgettes um, now as well. I'll probably start the pumpkins and things like that towards the end of April, early May. Um, but yeah, the season is taking off big time. So uh, time to get everything sown, get everything sorted and get everything kind of hopefully down here and uh, doing what it needs to do. So. Uh, that's it for today then. So all the best guys. Take care. Bye-bye.